Hello, this is Robert Thomas with Photoblogstop, and today's tutorial will be on how to correct the tones in your images using curves, blend modes, and self-blending. Let me start by saying that the effect we're going to apply today using self-blending, uh, it can be achieved by jumping the layer. Uh, but one of the benefits of using self-blending is that uh, we're not jumping the layer. We're, instead, we're using a dummy layer or a placebo layer. Um, and uh, you'll see what I mean in a minute, but basically uh, if you use a technique to jump the layer, you're going to be increasing your file size, and that becomes really apparent, especially if you're working with uh, PSD files. So by using the self-blending technique I'm going to show you today, uh, we'll keep the file size down and also have some additional adjustment options that you would not have had if you jumped the layer. So in this image, what I'm going to do is I'm going to brighten some of the shadows and I'm going to uh, darken some of the highlights. And let's start by clicking on the Create a New Fill or Adjustment Layer icon and selecting the Curves option. Uh, we'll then change the blend mode for this new Curves layer from Normal to Screen. And when I do this, you'll see an overall brightening effect on the image. Uh, now what we want to do is we want to selectively paint this brightening effect in. And so what we'll need to do is we'll need to conceal this effect. And to do that, we are going to invert this layer mask. So I'll do con uh, Command-I on a Mac, Control-I on Windows to invert that mask. And now that the mask is black, you can see that it's, it's concealing the effect of that screen blend mode. So let me take this opportunity to say that um, there's an old adage that blacks conceal and whites reveal. So if you ever want to, to hide the effect that you've added to an image, you would just add a black layer mask. If you wanted to show it, you would add a white one. And the benefit of adding the black mask here is that we can now paint with white to reveal the effect. So let's get our uh, paintbrush tool. And that is right here in your tools palette select the brush tool. You also can use the B key to select the brush tool. And uh, we want to paint with white, so I'm going to hit D to change the, um, to set the color palette to the default colors. And that makes our foreground color white. And we're painting with a blend mode of normal, opacity of 50% and flow of 50%, which is fine for our purposes right now. So I am uh, just going to paint in this area here a bit with white and that's you can see that it's starting to brighten some of the shadows up and I think I'm going to um, reduce the size of my brush on a Mac I'm going to hold control and option and then I'll hold down the left mouse button on my mouse and I will drag left or right that same keyboard uh, combination uh, control and option can also be used to change the hardness of the brush you're using. So if you move your mouse up or down while holding the le left mouse button, you can see the hardness changing. So I'm going to, like I say, a soft brush, and I'll set the size to about that. And I'm going to continue painting in here. And try to just move quickly here for the sake of the viewers. And I'd say that's probably good enough for now. Maybe a little bit on the dog's mouth. He's smiling here. He's a happy dog. Okay, so uh, that takes care of um, painting on this layer mask. Uh, whenever you do this, it's always a good idea to feather your, your brush strokes. So here in the uh, Curves Adjustment area, you can see there's a Mask tab. I'm going to click on that Mask tab and I'm going to adjust the feather. I'll bring it up to, uh, let's say, around 3 pixels. Now you might, um, you might notice that you can't really see that much of an effect of that feather. Um, so what you can do is you can display the mask by holding down Option and clicking on the Layer Mask thumbnail. And that displays the mask on the screen. So just for example, let me just bump this uh, feather way up and you can see the, uh, the effect there. So I'm going to bring this back down to 3 pixels. Go back to my adjustments panel for the curves. And I'm going to option click on this. 
icon to hide it again. If you're on a Windows computer, that would be Alt-click. Okay, so uh, we've just uh, brightened up our shadows. I'm going to turn off the visibility icon here to show the before and the after. And now let's darken some of the highlights. So I'm going to repeat the same procedure. I'm going to come down here and click on the Create a New Fill or Adjustment Layer icon. And I'm going to add another Curves layer. And this time we're going to change the Blend Mode to Multiply. And once again, we want to paint this effect in. So I'm going to do Command-I on a Mac, Control-I on Windows to invert that mask. I have the Brush tool selected. We're painting with white. And I'm going to adjust the size of my brush a bit to make it a little larger. And I'm going to start painting in this effect. And what it'll do is it'll start darkening some of the areas that, um, that um, I want to tone down just a little bit here. Maybe a little bit on uh, Rover's face here. Okay. Um, uh, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now um, let's let's uh, add a feather to our brush stroke. So once again, I'll click in the mask panel and I'll adjust our feather up a little bit. And I'm just going to go with three pixels once again. And we can now um, I'm going to hold down Option or Alt on Windows, and I'm going to click on the visibility icon for the background layer and that will basically turn off visibility for all of our adjustment layers so we can see the before and the after. All right. Um, now I'd like to take the opportunity to tell you that um, when we add these curves adjustment layers and apply a blend mode to them, they're basically uh, placebo layers. Uh, they're dummies. And uh, like I said earlier, it's not going to significantly contribute to the file size. Uh, if we jump the layer, it would. These dummy layers do not um, add that much to your file size, so it is a, a benefit to use this technique. But let me say that you don't have to use a Curves Adjustment layer here. You could use any of the adjustments in here that you can leave neutral. That is something that you can select where you cannot make any changes to it. For example, you could use Levels if you uh, wanted to because with levels you could leave the settings as null and uh, that would work fine as a self-blending um, adjustment layer. Now something like a pattern would not work because that would um, that would alter your image it would actually add a pattern on there so you see that I'm going to cancel out of that. Okay so uh, you're not limited to using curves when you use a self-blending technique you can use other um, other adjustment layers. Um, in this example we did use curves and that gives you the opportunity of using other curves um, adjustment options. Uh, so that's one of the benefits of using curves. Um, also let me say that um, because these are on their own individual uh, layers you can also adjust the opacity for each one of these to dial in exactly what you want. So let's go down to this um, the bottom layer here where we brought up the shadows. I'll turn the opacity way down. You can see the shadows start coming back. You can dial it back up to where you want. If you find an effect that you um, that you want more of, let's say we want more of a brightening effect, what you can do is you can jump the layer by doing Command J on a Mac or Control J on Windows. And uh, remember that when you're doing this you're not really significantly increasing the file size because these are not uh, background layers, they're just these placebo dummy layers. Um, so once we've jumped that layer, we've uh, increased the effect of that brightening effect, and I can dial it in to where I think it looks appropriate by adjusting the opacity for the layer. And that looks pretty good to me right there. Um, another uh, tip would be that you can effectively disable this layer mask to see what it would look like without it. So I'm going to hold down shift and click on this layer mask icon and you can see here's the effect without the mask, here's the effect with the mask. And I'd say that's a keeper, that looks pretty good. Let's um, Just for grins, let's try jumping this uh, layer that we used to darken some of the highlights. So I'm going to do Command J on the Mac, Control J on Windows to see what that looks like. 
and I really don't think that looks that great, but I can try adjusting the opacity down significantly here. And that's not too bad right there. Okay, so that there's our effect. We've just successfully brightened our shadows and we've darkened our highlights using the self-blending technique. Um, let's say um, one more effect we can apply here is uh, just to give it the, some finishing touches would be to darken the edge of this image just to draw the viewer's eye towards the subject. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm going to add a, another curves adjustment layer. And this time I'm going to leave the blend mode to normal. And um, I'm going to invert the layer mask, command I on a Mac, control I on Windows. And then I'm going to drag this curve down a little bit to darken the image overall. And you can't quite see that because we have this mask has already been inverted. So I'm just going to disable it by shift clicking on it. And that looks OK. So hit B for the brush tool. My uh, foreground color is white. That's fine. I'm going to give myself a nice large brush, soft brush. And I'm just going to paint around the perimeter here a little bit. just to darken the edge. Just a little bit there. Okay, good enough. And if you want, you could adjust the feather a little bit here. That looks fine. All right, so there you have it. Uh, we're pretty much done. I'm gonna um, hold down Option and click on the background layers visibility icon to show the before and the after. All right, that takes care of today's tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please do visit photoblogstop.com where you can find a collection of other Photoshop and photography tutorials. Thank you very much.